Okay, importing. So you have imported your photos into, um, you know, whatever folder. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is go inside that folder and we're going to import all the photos into Lightroom. All of the raw photos. Okay. So you'll just select, like, if the folder has, you know, your JPEGs and your raw files in there, just select all the raw files. Okay. Um, and then there's a couple of different ways. Uh, after you have Lightroom open already, um, here's how I do it. You can you can go up here to the menu in Lightroom and you can do uh, import from up here, but I don't really like doing it that way. Um, I just like looking at the files that I want to import mm -hmm. and um, you know highlight them and then just drag them onto the icon, the Lightroom icon. Okay. When you do that you'll see that it's going to build uh, you know thumbnail previews of all the photos in that folder and then um, automatically the um, it should check all of the photos in that folder mm -hmm. uh, for import okay. and that's what you want um, unless you just want to import you know certain ones um, then you can you can go through these and uh, just select the ones you want to import right, right. Um, down here there's like you know you can make the thumbnails bigger so you can look through them and see which ones you want to select which ones you don't mm -hmm. so I'm not going to import all these because it's going to take forever so uh, uncheck oh up here all photos okay so I'm just going to import mm, these these turtle photos right here So click on the first one, go to the last one, hold down shift, and then click, and then it highlights all of them. Um, if I click this up here, will it select only those? Nope. Okay, now that you have those highlighted, there should be a way to just check these. Oh, there we go. You just have to select the first one and then it does all of them that you've highlighted. Okay. So, let's look at some options up here. No, we'll do that later. Okay, so we've selected the photos um, that we want to import into Lightroom. Mm -hmm. So what Lightroom does is it you basically when you're importing photos into Lightroom it's not actually taking the file and making it to where none of the changes you know the um, editing stuff that you do to the photo mm -hmm. it's not going to be permanent on the photo uh, unless you export it. So right. you're basically just pointing Lightroom to where these photos are on your um, hard drive uh, so that it knows where to find them so it mm -hmm. can make the edits. So we're just going to import these in and so you'll just hit the import button down here once you have the photo selected. And when it does that it's going to basically just show you all of the photos that you've just imported from that one folder. Right. 
over here on the left um, it's just going to show you those photos previous import if you want to see all of your photographs um, up here in catalog you can click on all photographs and it'll go back to that nice. so previous import just shows what you just did which is cool um, okay so let's uh, well first of all let me show you the different parts of Lightroom since you're not familiar with it so there's different panels there's like four different panels uh, in Lightroom so this is your like navigation um, file handling thing uh, so any of these panels you can get rid of at any time you don't have to have them all open I just have them all open because the screen's so big I can um, but if you're working with a smaller screen you want to hide stuff while you're not using it then these little arrows on the side down here in the bottom um, just click the arrow and it will hide it Nice. and then you can just do that to... okay so You've imported these, and so the first thing I want to do is I want to create, um, and you don't have to do this, but it really helps me, especially when you start getting thousands of photos. Um, what I'll do is I'll tag these with keywords. So just highlight all of these. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so scatterbrain. So the different parts. So this is your file handling panel over here. The panel on the right is your. Um, uh, now this is in while you're in library. This is all about file handling before you start editing. Okay. So all of the stuff on the right is where you're going to um, create all of your m metadata for the photos. Metadata is stuff that you add to the photos um, into the data of the photo so that while you're, if you want to look for different types of photos, like um, let's say you go back to Lightroom after a year of shooting and you want to see only turtle shots or only taco shots or only whatever, this is where you can distinguish these different types of photos. So, um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, just highlight all of these. It's already highlighted. And I'm going to um, keywording here. So keywording, I'm going to enter whatever tags I want for this photo. And they can, it can have multiple tags. So if you want, if you want these photos, to show up in different things like I could have this show up in turtles I could have it show up in turtles underwater uh, if it was over under shots of a turtle I could do turtle over under um, you can make tags whatever you want keywords so um, whatever is easier for you to find later so this one I'm just gonna do turtle and I already have it so just tag it and when you do um, key keyword tags if you want to do multiple um, it's, it's going to have these suggestions of stuff that you've already done um, so you can just if you see it down here already you can just click on it and it's going to bring it up um, but when you're first creating these and you want to do multiple ones um, all you'll do is you'll put a comma in between mm. and then it separates right. the, the tags that way so um, this one like you know, I could put a location, I could put, you know, I mean, you can do it any way you want to. So this one, I'm just going to do turtle, whatever. So it shows up in my turtles. So once I have the tag there, um, we're good there. Uh, if you want um, to add your um, copyright information, um, You can do that. Uh, I've created a preset for my copyright, so. So that's like that your name is on the photo. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's just so like if you ever post this somewhere and somebody takes the photo, it has your information like embedded inside of it. Oh. So um, you can you can prove that you're the copyright 
holder for this photo and when it was taken and all that. Okay, we're gonna pause. So how would I get that? I just basically I would put my name in here. Yeah, so you'll just create a preset. Okay. So in this little part right here, this is under the meta metadata. Yeah. And so um, I already created mine, but you'll go in here and do edit presets and you can create your own. Oh. And so um, basically under copyright information, I've just, I mean, you can fill all this stuff out if you want to but I've just put my copyright my name copyright status copyrighted um, and then I'll put like my website or whatever you know you want to put in there okay. and then um, oh, that's so basically yeah that's basically all I have and then you can save it and you know make it whatever you want right. and then that way every time you come in you can just select it from here and then, cool. and then once you do that, select that, it's going to ask you, oh, which photos do you want to apply that to? All, all the ones selected. Okay. And then would that be shown, like, would your name be on the picture or is it no. just like hidden? No, it's just okay. embedded inside okay. the data of the photo cool. with all this stuff. Like this shows you the type of camera that was used to capture it. It shows you the lens you use, the focal length, the ISO. It shows you everything about the photo. So, um, Okay, so now that you have your tags, now I'm going to show you why tags are important here in a minute, but um, once you have your tags set and you have your copyright information or whatever you want to put down here, um, then you're ready to, it's basically ready. So you'll see these little icons appear on the photo once you've applied this stuff. Mm -hmm. You'll see these little icons appear and it shows that, okay, oh, it's got a tag, it's got keywords on it. So you're all good and you're ready to go. Okay, so once you have all this done, uh, you've imported these into Lightroom, you've, from your hard drive, you've tagged it, you've copyrighted it. Now, the fun begins. Now you're ready to um, edit the photos. So, this is all good, you're all good here. Um, so now what you're gonna do uh, to edit is go into your develop module. Mm -hmm. And this brings up the uh, the good stuff. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go over all this editing stuff and just show you basic edits that I would do to underwater stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can obviously you're gonna have your own style and do whatever you want to with it. And there's a lot that I'm not covering, and um, there's like a million tutorial videos on Lightroom that you can watch on YouTube mm -hmm. that shows you everything about this and I would suggest watching some that shows you workflow and uh, all kinds of stuff but I'm just going to show you kind of basic stuff so uh, okay so you have these um, so this is your film strip down here it's going to show you all the photos um, uh, oh, before we get into this, let me just show you real quick. Sorry, I keep <coughs> bouncing around, but I'm going to go back to the library, and I want to show you why um, the tagging was so important. So um, I'm going to go back over here, and instead of looking at the photos that we just imported only, uh, we're going to look at all the photos that we've ever imported into Lightroom, all time. So I've got like almost 40,000 photos imported into Lightroom right now. And that's like not even half of the photos I've taken. So um, this gets to be a huge mess, right? Mm -hmm. And so the reason tagging is so important is because um, I want to, um, there's a certain photo that I know I've taken, um, but I have no idea where it's at. And I don't want to sit here and go through 40,000 photos and try to find it. So if I've tagged the photo properly, I can at least narrow it down to only those specific ty types of shots and then find the, the photo I'm looking for there. So um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, where are we here? Filter. Develop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> library where is this 
Here we go. Okay, now we can search. There's one of two ways that we can search. You can click on this meta metadata thing up here, and it's going to show you all the stuff, and you can sort through all of your photos in your library by a thousand different ways. Mm -hmm. If you want to see only the photos that you took with a certain lens or with a certain camera, you can do that here. Right. Um, if you want to um, search, you know, a specific date, you can do that here. Um, all kinds of stuff you can do. So I'm um, just going to hide this up here. Uh, what I like to do is go down over here to my keyword list. Now my keyword list is going to show every keyword I've ever created for a photo. So let's just say I want to I want to look at all of my taco photos that I've ever created or that I've ever mm -hmm. tagged. So what I'll do is I'll go down here to my um, keyword list for taco uh, and I'll just click on this little arrow over here mm -hmm. next to that. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring in over here every single taco photo that I've ever imported into Lightroom that I've tagged. And so, sweet. Um, uh, and then there's another, like, you know, thousand ways you can do everything in here. But um, down here, you can do sort order. So um, if I'm looking, like, at all of my photos, again... Um, let's just do all keywords up here. Um, back to all photographs. Go back to the develop module. And I want to see, you know, I basically want to see the photos that I imported last. Can go down here. Um, oh, sorry. Sort order. And you can do all kinds of stuff. Capture time, uh, added order, uh, whatever. So let's just do added order. Mm -hmm. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And here's those turtle photos that we just imported. So let's look at those. So I'll just click on, you know, whichever photo. Develop, and it's time to edit now. So, um down here in your film strip, whatever one you're clicked on, obviously that's the one that's going to show up here. You can use your keys on your <coughs> keyboard to scroll through, um, you know, whatever. Let's just find one we want to edit. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, let's just edit this one. I like the lighting on his shell. <laughs> okay. Before we edit, um, the panel over here on the left, when you're in the develop module, this panel on the left, um, there's all kinds of presets that you can have. We won't talk about that right now. Um, what I want to show you is your history. So just like with any good editing software, Photoshop, whatever, you're going to have a history of edits that you do to a photo. Mm -hmm. So any change that I make over here uh, when editing this photo, it's going to sh you'll see it start showing up over here. Every single thing I do, it's going to be like boom, 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 boom. So if you ever want to go back in the edit, you can always go back to wherever you are and start from that right, point, right. which is really cool. Okay, so basic editing. Um, this is your editing panel over here. It has everything that you can do to the photo. Um, these tools up here, I'll just explain those real quick. This is this one right here is your crop. Um, so if you want to crop the photo, obviously, to get it however you want it. Um, this is the spot removal tool or cloning tool that's built in for like super simple cloning edits or healing. 
Uh, I like doing healing, like if I'm trying to get rid of stupid spots or stupid mm -hmm. stuff that I don't want, like this little black dot, which is probably a fish or something. <laughs> I don't want it there. It's like kind of annoying. So I will just, um, you can do this manually here. Select your size, select the feather of it, the opacity, whatever. So I'll just go in right here, click on that. It's on healing already. And no voila. way, it's gone. Oh yep. man, it's like magic. Oh. <clears throat> so uh, and then so I'm done using this tool. I'll always go down here and click done to go back to the normal thing. Okay, so that's um, spot removal. There's red eye stuff if you're doing mm -hmm. portraits that gets rid of red eye. Um, these are graduated filters, like ND filters, graduated filters that you can make. Uh, this is more advanced stuff, so like if I wanted to make the top of this photo darker or have more color, whatever I want to do. So, so I want to make the top of this photo darker, so I'll bring, you know, and I'll do this grad filter up here. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so tons and tons of stuff, but because of time. Uh, so that's your grad filter. You can also do a circular filter mm. and make it do whatever you want. So if I just wanted to, you know, make the turtle lit up and, you know, do it that way. And then you can go in here and adjust how, you know, whatever. So that's your circular filter. And then what did you press to get rid of it? Um, just down here. Oh. So you'll see it pop up, you know, once you're in a tool, yeah. then um, you can either click on it again up mm -hmm. here to get rid of it or you can click done down here. Uh, and then this is your brush tool, which is, seriously, you should watch tutorial videos on every single one of these tools up here, mm -hmm. because it's gonna go into depth of everything that you can use with them. So I'll just give you like an example of what I wanna do with this brush tool. So I let's say I wanted to make his shell more you know, darker, brighter, more color, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I would take this brush tool and I would come in here and I would just paint over his, um, let's see, zoom in, and I would just paint over his shell. Um, show selected mask overlay down here so it will show you where you're painting. Mm. So I'm just gonna paint over his shell. I'm not gonna be real precise with this for time's sake, but you know, whatever it is, I can brush over this. And then, okay, now I know where I've painted at, so I wanna make changes to just that area, so get rid of the mask so I don't see it anymore. And so I'm selected on, this is this edit because these little dots appear, so mm -hmm. I could do multiple edits everywhere. So anyway, we're gonna make sure we're on this edit. And then I can go over here and I can adjust. Oh shit. Whatever, you know, give it more color, you know, change the, yeah. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the brush tool. Okay, so those are your tools up here. Mm -hmm. Now let's get into basic editing of a photo. Um, zoom back out. Okay, uh, well, let's first of all, let's just crop this and get it to where we want it to be, whatever. Once you're done with the crop, you can 
hit done you can click on this up here you can hit enter on your keyboard and it will make the change the crop and you can always readjust this crop later if you want to um, yeah all right it's cropped okay editing um, you have all of these panels over here of stuff so let's just start with the top one which is your basic editing stuff um, first thing I'm gonna do that I always do especially with underwater photos um, is correct the white balance of the shot Typically, um, especially with GoPro shots, um, everything is going to have a blue haze to it. So you want to bring, you know, I want to bring more of these natural colors out. Um, so what I typically do is I'll, um, the white balance up here is I will, um, for underwater, I'll typically bring, you know, this up this way and then this this way. Mm -hmm. And you can, autom I mean, immediately see the difference in more natural colors here. And it all depends on how you want to edit. I mean, if you want everything to have a blue tint. So, white balance, we'll just leave it there for a second. Um, so, then I would just go down the line and just play with it until I get it to where I want it to be. Um, exposure, you know, if it's underexposed or overexposed get the exposure to where you want it to be contrast now this is only like I was telling you earlier this is only possible because I shot in raw if this was a JPEG file you wouldn't be able to control hardly any of this that looks way better already yeah and I've only and I've only done two things that's so yeah I've only done two things and it's already like oh my god um, okay, and contrast, um, highlights, I don't want, you know, it to be so bright in certain spots, so I'll bring down the contrast, or bring it up, depending on what I want, shadows, the shadows are going to fill in detail, a lot of time with dolphins, um, especially shooting in natural light, I'll, I want to bring up the shadows a little bit, so you can see a little bit more of their skin, or whatever, white, Blacks, you can make blacks darker, brighter. This is a really awesome thing right here. Um, this stuff right here, your presence or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, clarity is crazy awesome. So you have to use it sparingly, but um, like um, Michael C., if you've seen any of the photos that he edits, he goes way overboard oh, on yeah, clarity. Oh yeah, they're like like paintings, like they yeah, look like, yeah. Right? They, so he would probably use clarity all the way up. He'd right. go like this. Um, right. So it just depends on the photo. I always bump the clarity up just a little bit to give it more kind of that. Yeah. It, it makes it make, everything out really. Yeah, good. yeah. It makes kind of everything pop a little bit right. so I don't want to do too much so then you know you can play with your vibrance contrast It's all your personal style, you know. Right. However you wanna, whatever feel you want that photo to have. Okay, so that's your um, that's your basic editing panel. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that I'll always do first. Um, Is there a way to go back to the original picture, like to click between? Yeah, absolutely. And... Yep. Uh, down here, there's before and after, if you want to see it side by side. Um, like this right here will cycle between before and after views. Bam! Holy shit. Like crazy, right? Yeah. Wow. So, um, Dude, that's nuts. 
This is why shooting with red filters, like getting a red filter for underwater and stuff, is not really necessary for me. Because I always do everything in post-production, so I don't really need to correct, you know, everything beforehand. Shit, I was just about to buy a red filter after this. Yeah, well, they're really cheap. I bought one for, like, 15 bucks. When yeah. I dive, when you get back to the surface, you always have those air bubbles, and it yeah, looks yeah, super yeah. red, That's so true. I didn't like, like that. And it, it does help a little bit for certain stuff, <clears> you know, <throat> but if you're going to be doing post-processing uh, for video or photo, then it's not really that necessary. Right. Uh, in my opinion. Mm. So before and after, you can scroll through, you know, you can do this one and drag it, I think. Uh, no, okay. I think that's so crazy. Oh. Yeah. Or a hundred times better. And that's just with the basic editing? That's just, I mean, that's just from what I just did in like less than, you know, like a minute. How about, you know, some people have like, um, the sun rays coming down from, they're like shooting from down low and they have the sun rays and they kind of turn orange or like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that would be uh, something that you would adjust um, like a certain part of a photo with mm -hmm. like a graduated filter I was showing you. Because mm -hmm. you can go in here and um, like I can find an example of that actually. Um, let's go back and look at my... Let's see if I can find an example of where I did that. Like yeah. Like this yeah, yeah, photo. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this is a good example though. Because this is. Here's another one. Let me look at. Turtle. Turtles. And could you do like multiple edits of one photo? And can you yeah, absolutely. Them? Yeah. Yeah, I can show you that too. Um, cool. Like I said, it's um, it's not it's not destructive. Like so, anything you do to a, a photo, edit wise, um, it's not making those changes to the actual file. So right. those changes don't become permanent until you export that photo. When you export the photo, those changes become permanent on the exported photo, but your original file is still editable. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can make what's called, um, uh, what are they called? Virtual copies. So if you have one photo you know you want to do multiple edits to, you can select the photo, create a virtual copy, like okay. if I do this photo right here, oh, I can't do that one. Anyway, create a virtual copy and it's going to it's gonna bring another one of that just next to it. Right. So you can do that as many times as you want to and then Sweet. do edits for different things. Um, well, that one's super clean. Water looks oh, nice. Oh yeah, yeah it was like super shallow, super clean water. There's one photo, the thing that you were talking about, I want to show you just how oh, I no, did thanks. that. Oh, here we go. Nice. Oh, yeah, that looks so cool. So here's where I did a virtual copy. So let me just show you this. Mm. Oh, shit. Is this the raw or the edited? It's um, it's processing this. So if you see it get blurry like this, it's because it's processing. Mm -hmm. It's really processing this one because I did a lot of edits to this freaking thing. Okay, so I didn't really. This was my first edit on this photo. I didn't really like it that much. Mm -hmm. So I did another one, made it a little more natural. Oh yeah, that's sick. That's really good. I love sun rays coming through the water. Yeah. Really yeah, cool. it's my favorite. So, I can show you what I did um, to make these. 
Oh, good grief. So many edits to this photo, that's why it's taken so long to bring the preview up. Well, let's just go back to this one real quick. Okay, so um, again, the history is all here from all the edits that I've done to this thing. And like also we can look at the before and after. Oh wow. Okay, that must not be the original file. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know where the original file is. Crap. Oh jeez. Really does not like this file for some reason. Go back. Come on. Okay, so I did a, man, I don't know why it's blurry, it's still rendering or something. Um, so the light rays, see I drew a, um, I drew a graduated filter mm. um, down from the top. So that's this one. Right. And so I got it to where I wanted it to be and I can adjust it here down however and then once I've done that I can go in here and edit whatever I want to for just this graduated filter so if I wanted to make these rays more yellow or whatever mm -hmm. then I could go play with these settings um, just for this so see mm. So that's how you would do that. Man, this thing is having a rough time with this file for some reason. I don't know what's going on? Anyway, uh, there's probably another one I could show you better. Huh. Let's look at this one. Okay, so yeah, I did the same thing to this one. Just a graduated filter, brought it down. And this is probably, oh yeah, this is the original one. So I can go back down through all of my edits here. Mm -hmm. Holy <laughs> shit. So that's the original photo right there. Right, oh my god. So I played with, dun -dun -dun. here's the editing, dun -dun -dun. Oh, that's cool, and it shows you yeah. when you're scrolling through them. So here's where I added the um, graduated filter. Mm -hmm. So I brought it in, and then I started playing with the settings. So here's how it looks. Wow. So that's where I changed the color, the temperature adjustment. Da da da. Here you can tell I started right. using the um, brush. So I painted over his face and then I started adjusting the lighting on his face, color. That's really cool. Typically I don't do this many edits on a photo. <laughs> this was a long time ago too, so a lot of my editing Right, just is, trying to figure it out. Yeah. So you can tell I spent a lot of time on these light rays because I wanted them to look a certain way, you know, like natural. So if you look at them, I mean, you can see I, I did a lot trying to get it, you know, to the color. Right, sometimes it's kind of tricky. Yeah. And I know, who was it? So there's the before and after. <laughs> Completely different.
I won't have to do this, right? Huh? Will I have to do this? No, no, no. Okay. No, this is for just... No, no, no. If, if you're shooting on the boat, then it's just... Uh, you just give them... Okay. They just take the... Yeah, you're like, oh, like, shit. You didn't really <laughs> tell me much. She's just like, oh, I don't want to be a crew hand anymore. Right. And she's like, all right, you can be a photographer. We need photographers. She's like, she come down, pick up a camera. Yeah, this guy, um, you know Galen? Mm -hmm. I don't know him personally. Right, but, but like. Yeah. I don't know. I thought his pictures were fucking so cool. Yeah, once I'm like, how the hell does he do this? Yeah. And now I know. Yeah, everything, <laughs> yeah. Once you start getting into this, you're gonna be like, oh, okay. I know, like everything's. Everything's start. edited. No, nobody yeah. takes stuff that looks like that straight right. off the camera. Yeah. Nobody. So. That's yeah, unreal. Crazy. Sometimes his are a little like too much, you know. But. Yeah, everybody has their own style. Right, right. You know, of course. mine's like if you look at all my stuff, mine's like you know it's edited and like the colors pop and everything I do, but I try not to make it like too overboard. You right, know? right. Yeah. Like. But, you know, to each his own. So let's go back to that photo that we were editing. And I'll show you some more of the, um, more of the editing stuff over here. Okay, so we did the basic stuff to it already. Um, tonal curve. Uh, you can use this to play more with your shadows, highlights, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just like a deeper way to do some of the you know, stuff we did up here already. So if you need to play around with that, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one for now. What I really wanna show you is um, something that I always do to all my photos. Um, I'll go down here, detail, sharpening. Mm. So the way I like to personally, for my style, I always sharpen almost up here to its where it starts getting too much mm -hmm. and you can tell it's too much because you'll have this little red area <laughs> i try not to go into the red area so i'll bump up my sharpening to about right there at the threshold right and so if you look at the photo so here's with the sharpening all the way down right now watch what happens when i bump the sharpening up to up here mm. it just makes everything what sharp clear Blurred. Yeah. Now, a prop. Some problem with sharpening is that if it was too low, if you shot the file and it was too dark, uh, and you've done your, you know, um, exposure stuff, and you want to sharpen it, then you can start to get really grainy, mm. and you don't want grain. And so, um, like, if you look in here, you can tell it's a little bit grainy already. See that? So what I would do is if I can tell that it's getting a little too grainy. Now this, this comes into play especially like if you're going to print this later. You don't want it to be grainy like that. So what I'll do is I would come down here, noise reduction. And I would bump up noise reduction just a little bit. And it's going to kind of soften that, mm -hmm. that grain. See that? Oh. See how grainy that is? Mm -hmm. And smooths up. And then if I bump that up, it just kind of smooths it out a little right. bit. I'll show you when it's zoomed out. Okay, so that's without it. You may not be able to tell a big difference on this photo, but some you can. So I'll just bring that up just a little bit. Just makes everything a little smoother. So after I've done basic, I always come down here to detail and do the sharpening. That's my second step. Um, so let's get into some of the other more fun stuff and uh, you could play with this all day. So this is um, where you can control every single color uh, for the whole palette of your photo. So um, if you wanted like all of your blues to be a different shade of blue, then this is, um, this is what hue is. So hue, saturation, and luminance um, is your three different controls, right? So um, this is where you could control the hues of whatever main color it is. So your blues, if I wanted it to be more aqua color instead of, you know, like a whatever blue that is, then I would just bump this over to the left. Mm -hmm. nice. okay. And same the other way. I mean, that's drastic, but, 
but this is the original so if I want it to be more you know deep blue then just drag it over a little more purple or whatever um, that's what you don't want right there though so if you if you adjust colors and you see this um, these right. artifacts start showing up like that that's yeah you you don't want that at all so so it's just you know whatever I like that color right there it's pretty cool um, so yeah so that's your hues now you can play with the saturation um, a lot of the photographers like um, who does this a lot There's three or four photographers that have this style where they bump the saturation down, so it gives everything kind oh, of like a, a gray, like less like like a grayish. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I know exactly. So like, um, I think Kurt Chambers does it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's several photographers that do it, but um, and, and that's their style. So what they would do is they would go in here to saturation luminance and they would bump down right. the colors like this, you know. Um, like the blues, right. whatever, you know, mm -hmm. so it's all your style. I mean, it, it's going to take some playing around with and figuring it out to see what you want your photos to look like. But, um, so yeah, go in here and you can make the, you can bump the crap out of the blues and make it just, I mean, super yeah, like, that like that. I mean, that's pretty cool looking, right. you know, so I mean. Be interesting. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. So anyway, so yeah, so and you can do that with all the colors, you know, like um, the oranges, like in the coral, like in his, the shell, you know, I could play with that there. Um, and then would, um, like, would I be able to just section, you know, like section, like just part of the reef and then just be able to do that yep absolutely that's um that's yeah. where um you're playing your, with your the brush the shell that's oh, where your okay. brush comes in too okay. so like if i just wanted to you know this reef down here if i just wanted to mess with that uh, i could either do the graduated filter if i wanted to get more technical i could go into the brush paint this whatever section I wanted to, you know, fix, mm -hmm. you know, paint that, whatever. Obviously, I'd be more detailed. Um, and then go into the brush settings up here, and then... Okay, cool. Right. Mess with that, mess with the color of it. See? Yeah, I sometimes have like problem with their, you know, just getting the reef. Mm. Yeah, so. Okay, cool. Bam. I mean, yeah. yeah. Super easy. Okay, get rid of that. Um, so those are all your colors to mess with. Uh, we've gone over sharpening, the basic stuff. Um, this I'm not really gonna go over this stuff. It's kind of more technical. Like I mean, you could put color, like a color overtone, into your highlights and your shadows. Like if I wanted everything to have kind of a, mm. you know, mm. whatever, I could pick whatever color it is, and then I could play with adding a certain color, like overtone, to the highlights or the shadows. You know? Right. Yeah. Um detail is where the sharpening was lens correction okay this is this is kind of fun um all right so whenever you're messing with uh, lens correction if you want to do this um you would um always make sure constrained crop is on because if you don't uh let me show you what's going to happen so this is lens distortion, so especially if you're shooting with a fisheye lens, which GoPros are, mm -hmm. unless you take it off of the fisheye setting. Anything that's underwater, keep keep fisheye on. Right. 
anyway, let's just say, so I'll just show you what this does. So it's to correct like stuff with fisheye. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. So if <laughs> if I don't have constrained crop on, it does this, and then your photo's just jacked up. So Warped. so constrained crop, and it's just gonna it's gonna make it where everything stays in your you know. Right. So hmm. you can play with that. You know, whatever. <laughs> Um, defringe this is for um, sometimes you'll see like when you're editing you'll have like a this really weird like um, outline mm. around a subject like a glow kind of yeah it's like a weird like down here okay see this yeah 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 this is called um, oh frick what's it called <clears throat> Uh, anyway, I can't remember. I'm tired to remember the actual name of it. Sorry. Yeah, I know it. But anyway, that's so. Sometimes around your subject, you'll get this weird, like purple or blue or you know whatever glow around the subject. So if you want to get rid of that, you would come into this, and um, you can get your eyedropper tool here, and you can go in and select that exact color where that is mm -hmm. and once you select it now see this is going to be different because it's actually that color is actually a part of the uh, coral too but um see I select that and you see that you got rid of it yeah automatically now when you're using the eyedrop tool, see I selected that, it got rid of it, but if I needed to adjust it more, then I can go in here and mess with these until I completely get rid of that glow. Hmm. Hmm. See, but it, but on this one, because it's that color, it, it right. actually got rid of some of that, some of that color. On his shell. On his shell, yeah. so. Um, you just have to play around with it. A lot of times it's not going to be like that because it's going to be like something up in the water and then right. so like it's going to be a bunch of blue but then there's going to be like this weird like pink glow around it and so that's how you get rid of it. Um, let's get rid of that. Okay, back. Okay, that's um, lens correction and getting rid of that weird glow, which has a name and I can't think of it for the life of me right now. Um, transform, this is uh, also, you can play around with this, it's like really fun stuff to do. Um, always remember constrain crop whenever you're doing this. Um, but this is going to uh, <laughs> all kinds of weird stuff where you can like fix um, you know your uh, horizon lines mm -hmm. you can um, yeah, yeah. turn the picture a certain way yeah. um, you know rotation obviously um, it's just all kinds of weird stuff you can do in here and play around with um, so anyway that's that and then um, this is something that I will play around with like at the very end um, of editing. Uh, and this is um, like vignette. And so I'll just start off right here and just bump this down a little bit. And you can see the vignette start to... First sign of an amateur photographer is if they use too much vignette on their photos. It's going to be like that. Right. So I use it sparingly, like I, I may put a little. Yeah, I rarely ever use that one. Yeah. So it's good to do it a little bit though, especially if you're framing up something like in the middle of the right. frame and you want to just kind of darken the edges a little bit to draw the eye toward the center of the photo. And so I could do that. And then you can also mess around with the shape of the vignette here, the amount you know, how round it is, or whatever. Um, and then dehaze is really cool. Um, 
dehaze is a really cool tool. You could actually use dehaze after you do your basic. So all your basics. I don't know why they put it way down here. It's so weird. Um, I forgot about dehaze because it's kind of a newer feature in Lightroom. So um, after my original, you know, basic edits up here, um, mm -hmm. I would go down do the do the sharpening and then go down to dehaze and play with that and see if you want to use sorry um, the dehaze right here so like if your photos real like kind of hazy looking like that mm -hmm. then this this will bring all of that get rid of that so that's what dehaze does uh, I wouldn't worry about this. I mean, you can play with it if you want to, but I, I never touch this. So, all right, so that's basic editing. Yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff. If you ever have questions about how to do anything or, um, like, I want to know how to get rid of these people up here. <laughs> um there's basic ways you can do it in Lightroom. Um, Photoshop's really better for this, but uh, sometimes I'll try to do it in Lightroom and see if it works. Like the heal tool. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what mm -hmm. happens. Hey, what do you know? Nice. And then you can bring this over and select where it does its healing from. Right. Sometimes right. you can get it to look really natural. Sometimes you can't. Let's get rid of her. But this is using um, the heel, and if you want to really do it, you could use um, clone. Let's do clone. Clone is actually going to take exactly from another spot and use it on the spot I'm wanting to clone. So it's taking whatever's in this and it's actually put replacing that with this. Mm -hmm. So I can move that up. Okay. Sometimes it looks natural, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So anyway. I mean, I would never notice. Yeah, so now the people are gone, so. I know. Yeah. Or specks, like in the water, there'll be like weird right, stuff floating. White, like yeah. Plankton or yeah, so that this, this spot removal tool is like perfect for that healing. Just get it really small and just do, 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 do. some photos I have like a hundred spot removal things on just to get it to look clean. Okay. So we have our edit done. Uh, so now we want to be able to share this, obviously. So now we export. So whatever photo I want to export or if I want to export multiple multiple photos I can do that too by selecting you know whatever um, but let's just do one for now this one so I'm gonna right click export export it's gonna bring up that export dialog it's typically going to uh, bring up the. It's going to bring up all the settings you have done from your last export. Um, but I'm just going to show you uh, kind of what everything does in here. So uh, export location. So what I normally do is when I'm exporting uh, this up here. I'm going, you can choose to export the file into a specific folder if you want to, but for me, uh, it's easier just to export um, into the same folder as the original folder's in, so mm -hmm. where you dumped all your photos. So that's what I do, but what I do is I'll put it in a subfolder just for the edited shots. So I'm going to select, put in subfolder, and then I can name it whatever I want to. I name mine Lightroom Edits so that I know when I go into that folder, oh, okay, there's all my edited photos from that right. shoot. 
So I'll name it Lightroom Edits. Um, uh, so that's that. Uh, file naming. If you want to name your file a certain, uh, you know, whatever, like I name my files when I post them. So, um, so this one I would come up with, I don't know, uh, put this on custom name. And there's all kinds of different preset things you can have up here for names. Uh, I'm just going to do a custom name here and type it in. So we'll call this like uh, Allie's Turtle. <laughs> um, so name it whatever you want to there. Uh, I don't know why that's stupid. You don't need to know that. Okay, so here's where you're going to choose how you want to export the photo. So any photo that I share on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, if it's not for print, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Mm -hmm. Just because JPEG is the smallest, right. most compressed file that's easier to deal with. Everybody accepts JPEG. So I always select JPEG here. Um, and then uh, color space, just leave it on this. This should be the default one. But if it's not default, make sure it's on Adobe RGB 1998. I don't know why. Just do it. Um, now, if you needed to limit your file size to a certain size for some reason, you can do that here and put okay out. I don't want it to. I don't want the file size to save. You know, um, the biggest I want this file size to be is one meg. Okay, so anyway, typically just leave it off and it's going to save it to the maximum file size for the JPEG. Quality, always 100% here. Um, you can resize your image here if you need to for a certain whatever. If somebody's requesting whatever, you won't need to know that. I don't think. Um, all this stuff, whatever, include metadata, metadata, yep, you want to include that, it's going to include your um, camera stuff, it's going to include your copyright that you had already put on there, so that should be already set up. Watermarking, eh, don't worry about that. Um, unless you have uh, like if you want to start putting your signature mm -hmm. on photos or oh, okay. name or whatever like people do you can create that here so if you've created your signature you can go into here you can um, like I've already uh, you can go to edit watermarks and then you can set one of these up like I've already set my signature up bottom right of the photo so if I do that I'll show you what it looks like No, okay. Where is it? Why isn't it showing up? Oh, right there. It's going to show you where it's going to put it. Hmm. So anyway, you can bring in your own signature, like if it's a file. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll select it, whatever, and it and when it exports the photo, it will already have it on there. I don't do it like that in. Um, I don't use Lightroom for that. I always export with just the photo, and then if I want to add my signature to it before I post it on Instagram or wherever, there's an app that I use to do that on my phone, and then resave the photo before I upload it with the signature on it. So anyway. Okay, post-processing. Uh, here I always like to s for the computer to automatically open up the folder where the edited shot is once it saves it. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, um, I think the default here is do nothing. But after export here, I always select show in Finder. Okay. And so, Okay, so it's saving to the original photo where this was taken in a subfolder called Lightroom Edits, JPEG, 100%, metadata is included, show in Finder uh, once it's done. And then just click Export. 
and then it's going to do its little deal up here and then when it's done boom there it is right. it opened see it created that folder inside this called Lightroom edits and then inside of that is where my edited shot is there it is and so then I will move this to my phone through uh, I use airdrop mm -hmm. um, since you have an iPhone just use airdrop if you're on the same network I bring it over here airdrop and then uh, like typically if my phone's on the same network it'll show up here then I just drop it on there and it'll transfer it wirelessly over to my phone. So if I want to post that way. So that's kind of the workflow from start to finish. Cool. And then after that, you can, um, I could, I would be able to like delete all my photos from the card, right? After the airdrop. And uh yeah i i don't delete any photos okay you can if you want to but i just i just keep everything keep them all. especially if you're shooting with uh, gopro the files aren't going to be that big so okay. if you have like a two three four terabyte hard drive it there's it's going to be hundreds of thousands of photos you can put on that thing so i wouldn't Sweet. worry about deleting anything okay